All right, so here is a physics mechanics question involving two masses um, and a pulley, kind of hanging off a table or uh, a box, you could say. We're assuming that this is a sort of under ideal conditions. If you give pause and give this a read through before you start this question, you can see that it's smooth. We're kind of assuming it's frictionless. The string is inextensible, not stretchy, basically. It's not gonna have any bounce to it. Uh, we also say that the rope is light and thin, basically just implying that it has no mass. So basically everything is under ideal conditions. First, we're gonna show that the acceleration is 4.2 meters per second squared. Then we're gonna find the time it takes for point P to reach the pulley or hit the pulley. And then we're gonna look at maybe a limitation to this model. So first thing we need to calculate is the force. There are, should be no forces acting on this if it's frictionless other than gravity wanting to, the force of gravity, wanting to accelerate this mass downwards or pull this mass downwards. So let's think about this force. The force here would actually just be the weight and the weight will pull on this string. We could call it tension, we could call it weight. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna call it the force of weight because it's kind of like the weight of Q that is really pulling P along the horizontal surface. So if Q is pulling on P, what force are we pulling with here? Well, we know that force is mass times acceleration. Mass times acceleration due to gravity. And 9.81 being the acceleration due to gravity. And I end up with 5.886 newtons of force. Now this is one part where a lot of people uh, get mixed up. They forget that if this force is acting, well, this force is technically acting on both of these items. So this downward force is actually going to be trying to move both masses. So this is the force. However, we need to combine the masses. So we almost use the same formula twice, and that's what makes this a bit confusing. But to find the acceleration, we're gonna go, uh, acceleration is equal to force. And I need to combine the masses because if you think about them both being attached, if it were in a straight line, um, we could almost assume that this is one mass, M, M1 and M2. It's no different when you're going around the corner of a pulley, really. So we need to combine the masses and think about that force being applied to both masses at the same time. Mass one plus mass two. I'm gonna go ahead and add those. I will end up with an acceleration of 4.2 meters per second squared. So both masses will accelerate at that rate. Part B, find the time taken by P to hit the pulley from the instant when it is released. So here's the first thing to recognize in this problem, very easy to miss, is that we're trying to find the time it takes for P to go all the way to the pulley, basically to travel, how long will it take P to travel 1.5 meters? What makes this question sort of a two-part problem is recognizing that it will not have a constant acceleration throughout its whole journey because Q is actually only gonna fall 0.4 meters. If these are connected on a string, then that means the, due to the weight of Q, P is gonna have a force acting on it, but only for the first 0.4 meters because just imagine this whole thing shifting forward 0.4 meters. We're gonna end up with um, both of these guys accelerating at that rate that we said earlier. I'm gonna write that down, that's important. So basically it's like saying we're gonna accelerate at this rate, but only for the first 0.4 meters. What will be the acceleration for the rest of it? It's quite easy when you think about it. We say that when no forces are acting on something, it's one of Newton's laws, the motion will continue. So if there's no external forces acting on something, it will not accelerate, it will not decelerate, it will continue. So whatever speed it reaches in that first little chunk of acceleration up to the 0.4 mark, 
from the rest for the rest of it from 0 0.4 onwards and we know it's only going to travel 1.5 meters before hitting the pulley that's what we're trying to figure out from there to there it's actually going to have no acceleration or you could say constant speed or constant velocity so it's a two-part problem let's look at the first part and i'll come back to this second part For the first part, we're going to use our kinematic equations and see what we've got. We've got that it is traveling 0 0.4 meters. Its initial velocity is 0. Its final velocity we don't know, and actually we don't need it at all yet. We're trying to solve for time, right? Find the time taken. We're trying to solve for time, so we definitely don't know that. But we do know the acceleration, remember just in the first 0 0.4 meters of traveling. We know that it is 4.2 meters per second squared. I can go ahead and use this. I actually don't need this right now because I'm looking for T. So when you have the kinematic equations, I always write what I know first and I eliminate the thing I don't care about. It's kind of obvious because you'll have two unknown values, but you're obviously curious about, you know, the question at hand is time. So. That kind of reminds me, oh yeah, I don't need that one. And then you've got three out of four. So we're gonna use the kinematic equation. We have displacement is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Okay, initial velocity, remember, is zero. So the beauty of this equation is that we often get to do that for all cases where the object is beginning at rest. So now I actually have a much smaller equation and I can sub in what I know and I can solve for T. I'm gonna go ahead and rearrange for T right away. And if I rearrange for T, I'm gonna end up with T equals the square root of 2 times s divided by a. Now I can sub in what I know. If I sub in what I know, okay, I have the square root of 2 times the displacement divided by the acceleration. And that will give me a value of 0 0.436 seconds. So that is the time basically in this first chunk. If I look here, that is the time for the first 0 0.4 meters. So now let's take a look at the second portion of this, where it travels from 0 0.4 meters until the point where it hits the pulley. I always start by writing down my variables and thinking about what I have and what I'm missing. Okay, I'm looking for t. I'm trying to find the time it takes to travel. I found this first chunk, this first chunk of time. Now I'm trying to find the other chunk of time. So I don't know that. Acceleration, guess what? This q has hit the ground and there are no longer any forces acting on p. It is just gliding because it has some momentum. And if there is no friction, it will continue to slide, kind of like a, an object in outer space. If there, is, if there are no forces, no air resistance, no friction, things will just glide forever at a constant velocity. So acceleration is actually zero if it's frictionless. S, we're traveling, let's think about this here. We're traveling 1.1 meters because we're going from 0 0.4 to 1.5 meters. So you can just subtract those. Initial velocity and final velocity, I don't know. Well, here's something important. My initial velocity, correct me if I'm wrong, my initial velocity should be this exact moment here where this thing reaches its final velocity in that first section of the graph. So it's almost like I'm going to take my final velocity from the last problem and use that and input it into this 
uh, kinematic equation here. So let's find the final velocity from the equation before. To find final velocity, I use the kinematic equation initial plus acceleration times time. So my final velocity will be the initial velocity because it started from rest and we allowed it to accelerate, right? That was the acceleration for the first chunk of this times time. How long did we let it accelerate for or how long did it accelerate for? Well, only 0 0.436 seconds. Then the acceleration stopped because we hit the ground with our Q, our mass Q. But nonetheless, we can still use this final velocity as our initial velocity for the next section. That is very important. And that's what makes this question quite challenging. So I have my acceleration times the duration. And I get an acceleration of 1.8, sorry, I get a velocity of 1.83 meters per second. So this is final velocity if we're talking about the first 0.4 meters, but that actually means it's going to be the initial velocity for this one. So now I have my initial velocity. Do I need to know my final velocity for this guy? That would be like kind of my collision velocity at the end of the 1.5 meters. I do not. As long as I have my three out of four and the one thing I'm not knowing or the one thing I, I'm missing is the thing I'm actually seeking. So let's use this information and find T. Well, this one is actually nice and easy because velocity is distance over time. This is actually one of the kinematic equations when you sub in uh, zero as acceleration, you kind of get, le you're left with this basic uh, distance time equals velocity. This is kind of the most basic uh, velocity and mechanics equation. So we go ahead, if I am traveling, okay, well, I wanna solve for T. So let's rearrange that. Distance over velocity and I can determine my time it has taken. This is no different than any old problem that you probably did in lower grades where you're traveling some distance, in this case 1.1 meters, with a velocity of 1.83 meters per second. And how far will you travel? Sorry, how long will it take you to travel that? Sorry about that. How long will it take you? that would take you 0.61 seconds to travel 1.1 meters if that was your speed. So there you have it. You have the time for the second chunk and you have the time for the first chunk. Your final answer would be to add those up and depending how you round, you should get a total time of 1.05 seconds. Now there aren't a lot of significant figures in this question, so you could argue that the answer should just be one second in this problem. The biggest limitation affecting the accuracy, now we're talking about accuracy, the biggest limitation uh, to the, about the, you know, that will affect the accuracy of this would have to be the uncertainty. Um, because the measurements are given as 0 0.6 kg as a mass and 0 0.8 kg as a mass, we have no idea what the uncertainty of this is, but you could almost assume that this could be anywhere from 0 0.55, you know, something like that, up to 0 0.649, etc., etc. I'm kind of going through this quickly, but there's almost like a plus minus of 0 0.1 kg. You could almost assume that, not because it's stated, but you could almost assume that just because the lack of significant figures given. And when we are lacking significant figures, our answer should only have one significant figure. That is why I was saying that 1.05 seconds due to the uh, lack of significant figures, you could actually only with confidence uh, say that this is one second.